Alright, so over the weekend what I want you guys to do is sort of play around with this file that I gave you and use what's there and sort of get used to pulling these things around and seeing how it changes things not only in the view but in the data. So basically what we've got here are a series of masses that I've given you and they have um, some comments in them like if you pick one you'll see the public one has a public comment and this one has a private comment. You can also see that Revit is reading out its um, different areas. It also has a material application so um, if you'd like to try to get into this a little bit more you can but really what I'd like you to do is sort of stick with what we've got here and sort of move them around and play around with them. You can um, change it from public to private and it'll recategorize it. Um, there is also a listing of these in the project browser over here, just to let you know, they're masses. So under the project browser is the families that exist in here, and these are masses. So if you expand the masses, you're going to see all of these masses in here, with um, also with other assignations. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to come in and you can tag these things. So it's right now it's tagging with the type name, which is the same as the family name. This is the family, this is the type. But you can also tag it with area and volume. So for example, if I select this tag, I can come down and I can say, um, let's do type name and gross floor area, right? And so now you're getting the gross floor area of this guy. You can also right click on it and select all instances in entire project. Let's see if it'll do it. Oh, this one's a different. Right, so if I pick all these guys and right click on them and select all instances in entire project, it'll select all of those and I can flip them all out to that um, type name and floor area, right? So now it's giving me the floor area. Um, so we can talk about how to get volume and other kinds of things in there right now, but um, go ahead and sort of play around with this. Um, don't worry if it breaks. Um, don't worry if um, you can't quite figure it out perfectly. That's okay. I just want you to get um, a little bit familiar with it. Um, the other thing you can adjust if you would like too is the material color. So if I pick this there's a material applied to it and you can come in and actually adjust the color of SP04. So that's like space planning 04. And you do it by clicking just right here on the right of the um, name and a little ellipsis comes up. And if you want to change the color of it you can come to the appearance over here and just change the color here in the appearance. So if I wanted to change this to a different color, you know, if you wanted a custom color, so maybe a lighter teal green that's a little grayer, right? And pull that up and click OK. It'll now update that. And if I click OK, and come out here and let's click off of this guy so he's not selected. Whoops, let's see. Oh, well they're being sectioned right now so I actually have to change the section color as well so that's kind of a good point. So I've gone in and changed the outside color um, and that's being controlled by the appearance which flows through to the use render but the cut pattern is still the same color so if I wanted it to come out when it's cut in section I need to change it to 162, 187, 172. So I'll go to the color and go to 162, 187, and 172. Okay. Ooh, that didn't take. I must have, let's see. Oh, that's annoying. So I did it in the wrong column. Oh, only when I'm making a video. So 162, 187, although we could have it be purple, and 189 or 172 here. Okay, so that should do it. And if I click OK now, you'll see that guy change to a different color. And then 
both of those will change, right, because they're on the same material selection. So you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so basically what I'm looking for is some manipulation, like you can move these guys around, um, change them. I know that they're rectilinear. Uh, again, we'll get into like how to make them more specific. Um, I just want you to get a little familiar with it. Um, we can also bring things in from Rhino and, and um, they're a little more restrictive, but um, we can bring them in and start to create um, different views and sheets, right? So all of these will dynamically change based on what you change here. So anyway, you should have gotten a little bit from this from the intro that I did as well. So that's what I want you to do. Just work on this guy. And also notice how the schedule will update as well. So um, if you come in and let's take a look at this guy, which is, um, let's go ahead and change the, uh, the name back. Oh, this is a bit of a pain. Am I going to be able to do it? Um, to let's select all instances visible in an entire project, and I'll change it back to how about um, the family name, right? And so that's going to tell me which one it is. And so if I go in and select this guy and move it, you're going to see this guy update dynamically. I can also do things like uh, join this guy and this guy and it'll cut the, you know, it'll even it out. So we'll be able to look at stuff like that as well eventually. Okay.